What's going on, people? So, I thought I would come back into the whole Magic the Gathering thing and kind of explain uh, just an analysis on a deck I've constructed. I win more often than I've lost with this, so I'm pretty confident in the way it works. And its main focus is not what you would um, initially expect, you know? So, um, let's try to go over this a little bit. I'm going to go here. I put it all on Moxfield. Um, I have the physical deck, like, right on the table, but I feel like that would be a little bit too boring for people. So, um, my commander is Post the Enchanter, which is um, a new rendition for Post Malone uh, over Xur the Enchanter, which was an older stacks-based commander. Um, it has flying, and whenever it attacks, you may search your library for an enchantment card with mana value 3 or less, put it on the battlefield, then shuffle. I also have three Planeswalkers, Jace the Mind Sculptor, uh, very useful for control, Kaya the Intangible Slayer, which I mainly use for card draw and um, gaining life, making other people lose life, Lilian of Vest, uh, eh, I'd say she's useful as well. Um, and then, so, creatures. Uh, Ajani's Chosen, if I pair that with Enchanted Evening, which I have in my enchantments, um, very useful, uh, because it just creates an endless cycle of cats, and you can overpower your opponent with cats. Um, Aramancer. Uh, Dothi Voidwalker. I'm going to talk about this because not a lot of people have Shadow in their decks and they forget how useful that is um, because basically if, you're, if, an, if your opponent doesn't have any creatures with Shadow, they can't block it. There is no blocking it. It's a... Uh, this creature can't block or be blocked. It's just an endless attack cycle. Dranith Magistrate. Your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. Uh, useful. Uh, Drakskull Reaver, high mana cost, but very useful if you can get it out there. Flying, double strike, lifelink, whenever you gain life, draw a card. Grand Abolisher, during your turn your opponents can't cast spells or activate abilities of artifacts, creatures, or enchantments. During your turn, so it just stops people from messing with you when you're trying to play. Iliad Suncrowned pairs nicely with, uh, Walking Ballista. And, um, because it'll... It'll let you pummel them with uh, a limitless amount of ballistas, and I think you're also going to gain life uh, for every time that happens. Uh, Kami, the Crescent Moon. Uh, at the beginning of each player's draw step, the player draws an additional card. Knight of the White Orchard. Um, when Knight of the White Orchard enters the battlefield, if an opponent you can, if an opponent controls more lands than you, you may search your library for a Plains card. And uh, that's just mana draw. Uh, Kunaros Hound of Athreos. Uh, he's Vigilance, Menace, and Lifelink. And creature cards and graveyards can't enter the battlefield. And players can't cast spells from their gra uh, graveyard. Um, laboratory Mimic. Uh, if you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it, you win the game instead. Masako the Humorless. You may play Masako the Humorless uh, anytime you could play an instant. Tapped creatures you control may block as though they were untapped to one low cost useful. Um, or Oloro the Ageless Ascetic is a useful commander and he's kind of my staple secondary. If for some reason I don't feel like playing with Posey that day, I'm going to use this guy. Even though it's probably not going to be that prevalent, it is still useful because once you get him out on the battlefield, at the beginning of your upkeep, you gain two life. Every turn, you gain two life. Whenever you gain life, you may pay one mana. If you do, draw a card. Each opponent loses a life. Still very useful. At the beginning of your upkeep, if Oral or the Ageless Ascetic is in the command zone, you gain two life. It's a constant life gain with this guy. So, I think it's kind of hard to lose with this, but it's whatever. Whenever you draw a card, target opponent loses one life, and you gain one life with Quasa Augur of Agonies. Servant of Timurid. Whenever Servant of Timurid becomes untapped, each opponent loses one life. You gain life equal to the life lost this way. Two and a black. Regenerate Servant of 
Timurit. Spark Hunter Master Core, I use this mainly if I have a um, opponent that has a Planeswalker that I don't want to deal with. I'm just going to slowly try to take him down with this guy. It's a 3 mana, 3-4. Three, um, for 1 random, it'll deal 1 damage to target Planeswalker. For 3 randoms, it'll gain indestructible until end of turn. Syndicate Guild Mage, um, tap target creature power 4 or greater, and then... Um, with one black and four random, two damage to target opponent or planeswalker. Now you do have to tap it for one white, one random in that first step, but it's not a big deal if you've got white and black. It's a two-two. It's useful. Council of four is my defense mechanism. He has eight defense, no attack. This is really just to slow down whatever is going on on the battlefield. Useful. Uh, Tricks the decafile. Um, you don't have a maximum hand size because of this guy, and then at the beginning of your upkeep, if you have exactly 13 cards in your hand, you win the game. And for three random and one blue, you draw a card. I don't know why you wouldn't have this in here. I really, I mean, you, it's, it is unrealistic that you're going to win the game this way, but why not see if that happens? That could always happen. Tyramid chosen from death. Uh, his toughness is equal to your devotion to black, meaning that um, basically each black symbol in the mana cost of permanency control counts towards your devotion to black. And for one black and one random, you exile up to two cards from graveyards. You gain one life for each creature you exile that way. So its attack will always be two. You're summoning it for two black, and its defense just starts stacking. Um, walking Ballista, Nuff said it goes with Heliot Sunground. Um, but let me explain. It enters the battlefield with X being the variable 1-1 one, one counter on it. For 4 random, you put a 1-1 one, one counter on Walking Ballista. And then you remove a 1-1 one, one counter from Walking Ballista, it deals 1 damage to target creature or player. Uh, you're going to need to put it on the battlefield, and then you're also going to need Heliod Sun Crowned on it. But once you get those two things in there and out of the way, you've won the game. Windborn Muse. They can't attack you unless their controller pays two for each creature they control that's attacking you. It's flying, it's one white, and three random. Worm Coil Engine. Death Touch Lifelink. And when it dies, you create two Colorless Phyrexian Worm Artifact Creature Tokens. One of them is going to give Death Touch, and then the other one's going to give Lifelink. One of them's going to have it, and the other one's going to have the other. But it's, uh, it's very useful for six random. Uh, I've got a Demonic Tutor. If you can't afford it, um, I would try to trade it or find a cheaper one. Um, I don't have this exact copy. I have one of the older ones. But you search your library for a card, then put that card in your hand, then shuffle. It just gives you access to something you might be missing. One Diabolic Tutor. Uh, basically the same thing, but it costs four instead of two. Um, Fell the Mighty is a board wipe. Destroy all creature creatures with power greater than the target creature's power. Um, it's a just something I wanted to have, you know. Destroy all creatures that can't be regenerated. Wrath of the Gods. So have that in there too. So and then we've got some counter spells. I've got Absorb. I've got Counter Spell. I've got um what do I got? Dovin's Veto. Essence Scatter and negate for counter spells. Now I've got some little hate, side hate, saying go for the throat, which is going to destroy a non-artifact creature. I've got dark ritual, which is going to give you basically three black mana for one black mana. Crush contraband, which is going to exile target artifact, exile target enchantment, or you could do both, because you never know. Your opponent might have something. Um, I'm not going to discuss too much about the mana draw here. It's it's situational, circumstantial. I like to have variety. So Beacon of Immortality, I do need to mention. It's a five random and one white uh, to cast. It's an instant that I would highly suggest casting after placing Tainted Remedy on the field, which is an enchantment. But it double target player's life total and you cast it on them. You're not going to cast it on yourself. You're going to cast it on them because Tainted Remedy will say if an opponent would gain life, that player loses that much life instead. 
So let's say your opponent has 36 life at this point, and you give him this enchantment, and then you cast Beacon of Immortality, they have no life left. There is no, like, redundant, there is nothing. There is nothing they can do. Unless, you know, they have a counter, like we do. Uh, if you can counter an instant. Can you counter an instant? I don't know. Anyway. Um, mana draw Zorius Slocket. That's not that useful, but it's there. Uh, if you sacrifice it, you get two cards. Crawl space. No more than two creatures can attack you each, uh, each combat. So, useful if you're trying to slow them down. Dark Steel Plate is my um, equipment that I'll attach to uh, post the Enchanter. You equipped it for two random. It costs three, and it gives him indestructible. So you can keep getting those enchantments. So you can continue your strategy. Uh, I've got a uh, I've got a card from the Transformer series called the All Spark, but it's from doubling. It's a doubling cube. Um, three mana tap. Double the amount of each type of unspent mana you have. It's useful circumstantially again, like in an event. Um, Jaloom Tomb, three random, and with uh, two random, and you tap it, you draw a card, then discard a card. Let's say you're getting shit cards, or a card that you don't really need. Use it. Lantern of the Lost, one mana. Um, when Lantern of the Lost enters the battlefield, exile target card from a graveyard. Now if you spend one mana and tap it afterwards, you can exile all cards from all graveyards, then draw a card. And that is very useful, in a sense, when you're fighting someone that um, just keeps resurrecting stuff or bringing stuff back to life, like zombies, whatever. Meek Stone. I would only use this in special circumstances, but it is very useful because it says any creature with power greater than two may not be untapped as normal during their untap phase. Omen Machine. Players can't draw cards at the beginning of each player's draw step. That player exiles the top card of his or her library. If it's a land card, the player puts it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, the player casts it without paying its mana cost. I would only use this, okay? I would only use this if you've got Dranith Magistrate on there. Your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. If you have those two cards on the battlefield, which you, I would... I would not, I would use this very carefully. But if you've got those two cards on the battlefield, they're not going to be able to draw. They're not going to be able to come up with anything. The, whatever's in their hand is basically all that they have left. And that's why I have that in there. Um, it just, it'll plummet. Uh, anyway, post Citadel, three black, three random. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may play lands and cast spells from the top of your library. If you cast the spell this way, pay life instead of its mana cost. Very useful, and if you sacrifice 10 non-land permanents, each opponent will lose 10 life. Now, if you have an opponent, and he's got 9 life, and you've got a bunch of small stuff, but you can't really do anything with it, do that. Just do that. Soul Ring. Everyone needs a Soul Ring. Uh, tap 2 mana for 1. Turn mode's Crypt. Graveyard Hate does the same thing as Lantern of the Lost. Basically just exile cards from the graveyard. Uh, Winter Orb, it's your nuclear weapon. It's the one thing you have that will stop basically everything. Um, although it will also hinder you. So use that with caution and make sure you're playing with someone that's extremely competitive. Otherwise, I wouldn't even bother because um, they're going to hate you. They're really going to hit you. The game's going to last way too long. Um, it's going to slow everything, slow everyone down. But it's useful if you're trying to win. Uh, Black Market Connections, it just gives you possibilities. It's an enchantment that Post can bring up. All of my enchantments are, for the most part, if I remember correctly, three or less. So, uh, lose a life, create a treasure. You know, lose two life, draw a card. Lose three life, create a creature, if you need it. Chanted Evening. All permanents are enchantments in addition to their other types. That goes really well with Ajani's Chosen, because you're going to be able to create an infinite amount of cats. Uh, Flaming Fist, it'll give a double strike to Posty. Um, it's just a slight 
like added bonus. It's not anything amazing, but instead of him hitting for one, he'll hit for two. It does not give you an extra like enchantment, though. I just want to state that. Um, Ghostly Prison is uh, creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two mana for each creature they control that's attacking you. Now, if you have Ghostly Prison, this is what I'm thinking, right? Let's say you have Windborn Muse, and this spirit female is, I'm assuming, female. Could could be a feminine man or whatever. It, let's forget gender. I just, I don't want to be involved. But let's say this thing is on the battlefield, and then you, you attack with Posty. Now you have something special. It'll cost them four for every creature attacking you. Four mana. Who's going to throw mana away like that excessively? It's going to slow them down, which is why you have that there. Mystic Remora, it'll um, it'll give you card draw whenever they cast a non-creature spell. Uh, they'll have to pay four mana as well. And um, it has a cumulative upkeep, though, so that's the downside. You use it maybe in the mid or the beginning, and then get rid of it. You don't need to keep it on there, but it's good temporarily. Nine lives. Um, if the source would deal damage to you, prevent that damage. Put an incarn incarnation counter on nine lives. When there are nine or more incarnation counters on nine lives, exile it, and then when it leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. I get that this is risky, but hear me out. It's three, which is good for posty. And then it also works well with Solemnity. Players can't get counters. It's also three. So if you have that on, you're immortal. I just gave you immortality. Pacifism. Pacifism. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature can't attack or block. Useful. Phyrexian Unlife is my Solemnity uh, Nine Lives situational immortality complex. It's like a god complex. So, same thing. You're not going to lose the game, and you're not going to get infinite counters from Phyrexian on life either, because Solemnity's there. You have to have both of them there. You could do one first, and then add the other later. Or, you could swap them and pick another cycle. Um, but for some reason, if one gets removed, as long as Solemnity's still there, you're fine. For being immortal, I mean. It's like a, a whole crux of Voldemort, you know, type of thing. Anyway, um, Planar Disruption, uh, Enchant Artifact Creature or Planeswalker, Enchanted Permanent can't attack or block, and its activ activated abilities can't be activated. I would use this on a Planeswalker. Do not throw it away on a creature, but if you do it, it is, again, useful. Uh, Post Sigil, uh, which is, is it, it says Less Rock Sigil? Um, Anyway, two black. Whenever an opponent casts a green spell, you may pay two. If you do, look at that player's hand and choose a card from it. That player discards that card. I love doing that, and I think everyone will uh, if they, they get the chance. You're just getting rid of future problems, that's all. Uh, rest in peace. Um, graveyard hate, again. Um, exile all cards from all graveyards, and if it goes to the graveyard, you exile it again. Uh Tainted Remedy, if an opponent would gain life, that player loses that much life instead. I would put Tainted Remedy on first, and then I would either search or find Beacon of Immortality. And when you do that, you're going to um, win the game. That's a, it's a win con right there. Two card, uh, Cruelty of Jix. It's a, this is the one enchantment I have that's more than three. But I feel like it's worth it, because... Um, you're going to be able to return a card from the graveyard and put it onto the battlefield under your control. And it doesn't have to be a creature that died under you. It could be your opponent's. And that's step three. Step two is search your library for a card. Now, because of these situational two-win con cards, situa like two-win con cards, you're going you're gonna to want to search your library. Now... A target opponent revealing their hand and then you choosing a creature or a planeswalker card from it, that player discards it. Again, you're preventing the future, um, which is useful. Now, uh, Lance, let me talk about this pretty briefly. So I got one, I got, okay, let me, I got Dark Depths. Uh, if you don't know about that, let me explain it. It enters the battlefield with 10 counters on it, and for 3 mana you'll remove an ice counter from Dark Depths. 
When Dark Depths has no ice counters on it, you'll sacrifice it, and when you do, you create a 2020 black avatar creature with flying and indestructible. Once you have that thing on there, there's nothing basically preventing you from destroying them. Now, it's nice by itself, right? And you're like, all right, but how like reasonable is that? Well, let me answer. If you have Thespian Stage beforehand, or if you end up putting Thespian Stage as a land on there, for two mana and tapping Thespian Stage, you're going to make a copy of Dark Depths, but Dark Depths is not going to have any counters on it. And when that copy comes out with no counters on it, you're going to have a 2020 flying and indestructible creature that's going to demolish your enemy. Um, so there's a lot of ways to kind of fool around with this deck, um, and there's a lot of ways to win. Um, it is not a traditional stacks environment, but as you see, like it does kind of implement some things in there. And this deck is really good when you're playing with someone that is not prepared, you know, they're just not prepared for the amount of damage you're going to do. I have 34 lands in total. Um, if I can look. Yeah, we're talking about 47% white, 24 blue, and 29 black. It's a really high in white, but remember that a lot of those whites are also blues. And um, it works. It works for me. I love it. And I hope you guys, uh, you know, get some tips from this. I hope it helps you out. I've enjoyed post Malone's uh, Zur the Enchanter, post the Enchanter version. And... Um, yeah, it's been great. It's been really great. I've won a bunch with this. Um, I played against one of my my friends um, who I kept losing to for about a year, and playing with this deck, I was able to win twice. So it was it was a good day. Anyway, I hope you're doing all right. Uh, that's to my friend. Anyway, I will see you guys later, and I'll try to come back again with some other decks. I've got like six or seven more decks that I have uh, kind of made on my own and fooled around with, and I hope uh, this was helpful to the people that still play Magic Commander, uh, which I really, I don't know. I need to find people in Brooklyn or New York. I, I don't know where to go, you know? I don't know. I'll see you guys later, though.